Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. I have a few more things to say to you about ants. And the occasion for this is a really serious invasion of ants, small black ants into my home in the last month or so. And I've been doing major change-ups, caulking and all kinds of things to, to control the ants and keep them out of the home. The problem is this, the ants are telepathic. The ants apparently, and I'm getting all this information from the ants, so you're just going to have to take their word for it. I think they're from Alpha Centauri, and there are other beings also on Alpha Centauri that have trouble with whatever it is, it's the equivalent of ants over there, because Ants are so territorially aggressive. And so here on Earth, I don't think they understand too well what our society is like. They, they're hunter-gatherers in the main. And they may not understand that we're farmers and ranchers and we, we raise food and then we distribute food and then we eat the food and so instead of competing for wild resources these days most humans behave in that way they feel that they own the food that they raise and that it should belong only to them in so far as possible but the ants look upon food as just a free-for-all for everyone whoever gets there first whoever whoever eats the most and takes the most home to the hive like that. They're very highly competitive um, form of life. And they can hear us telepathically. When, for instance, we say the Buddhist prayer, may all beings be happy and so forth, unfortunately in my case they took it to mean that I would be happy to have them in my home and so I've had a giant influx of small black ants and and I can't I can't have them in my home they have to be outside and I've explained this but I've gotten really nowhere at all with them because of their extremely strong territorial instincts and their very fast reproduction rate all day long today I was working just to secure the stove top, marble countertop, and the cabinets around the stove. They, they got under the marble and behind the cabinets, between the wall and the cabinets, and everything had to be caulked. About a half an hour ago, I got to the very last part, which was an open space that they weren't coming out of but which, according, I was talking to the queen just then, when things get serious, the queen talks. She's a beautiful, mellifluous voice. And I had already caulked almost everything. And, um, and she knew this. She, she says she has a third eye point. She says she needs light in order for her third eye point to know where all the hive is and what all is going on with the hive mind. The hive mind, she says, that they are born with. So though they may not live that long, they are all born with this knowledge, the total knowledge of the hive. And she spends some time, or whoever it is, spends some time training the newborn ants to not be in anguish or in pain or affected by their death because they die a lot and they die soon. And so part of the training of the hive is that they should not fear death. In fact, I've had them, when I feel angry to the, towards the ants in the last few weeks, they, if one is crawling on me, if one crawls upon me, 
it will bite me. They, and they don't care whether they die or not. They just bite because they feel they ought to bite to make a statement regarding their, regarding their group, regarding their hive, you know. It's happened a few times. They're not really biting ants, but, but they know when I feel angry and they take offense for, on, on behalf of the hive and they bite. That's serendipitous. So the important thing that I found out today is that when there is no light, for instance, when I completely caulked the whole area of under the counter, behind the counter, and underneath, um, I got to a part that, that allowed air and light to get into the hive, which was deep inside the counter area underneath the marble and um, when I started to use wood putty to close that off that cut off the light and the Queen said that she was starting to lose the light and that she couldn't tell where everyone was anymore and that they were all going to have to stop the hive would have to stop I guess hibernate shut down and hibernate and shortly thereafter all the crazy voices I'd been hearing all day uh, subsided completely. Uh, it's as if they're trying to pretend that they're human beings by m miming the voices of people that we know. Uh, I've noticed this last year too when I was fighting the ants and finally the ants were gone and all the uh, really nonsensical and negative and aggressive um, voices that pretended to be the voices of people I knew uh, just suddenly stopped and it's happened again although there are a few more hives still in the house to combat and overcome um, so what I started to say is this I found out that when the hive stops because the Queen's third eye point no longer works that and and that's because it's completely dark where the Queen is Oh, um, oh, she said uh, that in the place they came from, another world, darkness was much darker than darkness is here. So some ants go out and forage at night. It's not, to them, it's not dark, she says. And she had a drone. The drones stay awake when the hive is asleep. And they relate, they don't understand, they just don't understand, they don't get human society. And the drones will try to talk to a male. The casts in amongst the ants are just so very distinct. They, they don't understand that, that I, I speak for myself, not for a hive, and that there's no drone. Uh, similar to their drones that they can talk to in my house but so they reach out and try to talk to try to talk to a person who's male someplace someone in the neighborhood some other person than me so and I started to say that when the hive falls asleep because of the darkness and because the queen can no longer communicate with it, all the hive mind. The hive mind falls asleep and then there's a sound. It's not like human speech, pretend human speech. It's not the queen talking to me or the drones talking to me. The workers don't talk, I don't know why. The worker females. It's a sound like crickets in a meadow when there's lots and lots of crickets and and you can't hear the individual crickets it's just like one tone I don't know if you've ever had that experience except that it's very very quiet and it takes ultra sensitive hearing to hear it and it takes over where there, before there were lots and lots of voices telepathic voices unwanted to tell the truth because they're so aggressive, they're, they're warlike, they're angry, it just 
It's not good for a light worker. And so the sound that they have, I asked the queen before she fell asleep, why do I hear this sound? She said, it's because their mandibles are moving. I said, well, does the sound ever vary? And she said, no, it always sounds exactly the same. So if you go out to a field of crickets and it, during the hot heyday, the high time of crickets each year, and listen very carefully to that sound, it is very similar to the sound that ants make. And I'll bet you didn't know before today that ants make sounds on the physical plane. And they do. But they're much more vocal on the telepathic plane. Well, you know, I have my concerns about the coming years and how humans will be getting along with with ants here on Earth, but I'm sure there are people working on this problem, on this situation, and I'm sure a solution will be found. One of the things I found out is that worker ants will sacrifice themselves by eating some poison or some gunk that we put in like um, to close their holes up, whatever it is that we put in to deter them, whether it's insecticide or whatever it is, worker ants will make themselves ill and sacrifice themselves by eating that stuff. And then the worker ants that come to take their bodies away might eat a little of that, and in that way that the hive may develop uh, immunity to insecticides and might be able to eat through wood putty and uh, other deterrents. And in fact, I saw some, they, they ate a hole in this, this, the porch ceiling uh, earlier this week and started coming in through there. And I've, I, I've just seen so many adaptations of the ants since the shift. They've gotten an awful lot brighter and we need to take that into account if we want to hold our own in this biomass battle here on planet Earth. I don't mean to sound too grim. I think we'll come to some conclusions and reach a truce. We can talk to the Alpha Centaurians that have been dealing with this issue probably far, far longer than we and see what knowledge we can glean from them. A good source for the wisdom of Alpha Centauri, as you may know, is Judy Satori. She has a site now named Ascension Library. You can go there and look up Alpha Centauri and find out a little more about it. She speaks that language as well, that language of the stars. Well, that's all about that for now. Excuse my grimness. I know I sound a little grim, but I've been fighting an intense battle for weeks now and there's still no end to it. God bless you all and keep you safe and be with you through all your days. I'll talk to you after I'm the victor. <laughs>